Well, I'm glad you're sticking around for the uh, the stream, Tommy. Um, sorry, uh, I'm keeping it from sleep. <laughs> I won't make this too long, as I said. And yeah, summer's coming in Australia and New Zealand, thankfully. Uh, warmer weather coming your way. Um, I'd probably actually enjoy it at the moment. It's uh, it's getting too bloody hot over here. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I could do with a with a cooler day. <sighs> Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. I'm kind of reading your comments at the same time. And I've got to kind of keep active with uh, talking on this. Um, so what else is going to be happening on the channel soon? Um, of course, I've got a lot of new, you know, content coming your way. A lot of uh, gang stuff, a lot of MC stuff. And a lot of stuff about my time here in Cambodia. I want to do a few more videos about my travels here and uh, show you some of the cool spots. Um, I'm hoping um, even this weekend, uh, the guest artists that are here at the moment, uh, are all going up to one of the, the local, um, it's like a pyramid or something, and it's a waterfalls and everything. So I'm hoping I can get up there on Sunday with them and film that and show you this because apparently it's, it's just absolutely incredible here. And it's incredible to see. And if not, I'm going to, uh, in the next few weeks, um, I have, uh, I probably want to book myself a, a bigger bike and go for a, a couple of days touring around to some of the waterfalls and mountains and temples and all that kind of stuff here. So, you know, show you guys all that. It'd be pretty wicked. Oh yeah, thanks Eva. You have a good time too. Cheers. Yeah, the motorcycle tour. I definitely need to do it. Um, the bike rentals here are so incredibly cheap. And of course I've got my helmet mounts and everything. So yeah, I'll take advantage of it while I'm here. So, I had so many other things I wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, I will definitely try not to do that either. You know, that's, that's generally my objective of uh, writing is not falling off. <laughs> yeah, all the tours, babe. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, there's, you know, like I haven't really been able to explore a lot of Cambodia since I've been here. Um, yeah, a little nod to my, my girlfriend there. Uh, <clears throat> as I was saying, I haven't really had a chance to look around a lot of Cambodia. You know, I want to explore more and show you and give me some tips would you guys actually be keen on um like tips and advice for traveling to this side of the world because i could do a couple of little videos um like the border run video that i am actually going to doing there's quite a few tips um about doing that and as, as as dodgy as it sounds doing a border run it's actually just a normal part of life here people um you have to leave the country to actually extend your visa which you're legally allowed to do they have no problem with it they just ask that you leave the country to do it um, and then you can get an extension visa and all that as well so uh yeah if you want to hear tips and stuff like that just you know let me know i'm more than happy to do some videos uh even about living here you know i'd like to show you some like the the cafes and the nightlife and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you all want to hear that, yeah, Tommy, sure, cool, yep. What kind of bike? Look, I don't know. Um, there's a couple of like uh, I think uh, CB 600s at the rental shop. You know, because obviously I want a bigger bike. Um, you know, small bikes just won't carry me around. 
Yeah, definitely. I do want to do the visa extension thing because it's a bit of a, it's not a complicated process, but it's a bit hard to understand, um, you know, and I couldn't find a lot online about how to do it. So, um, oh, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's what I will talk about. How you extend your visa here because the only place you can extend your visa um, when you're actually here uh, by doing an extension visa is in Phnom Penh. Um, but the other way you can do it is by actually giving it to a travel agent and they do it all for you. So, yeah, I'll do a little piece about that as well. It's quite interesting. Um, and plans on exploring any caves? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. The, um, I actually want to go out where they filmed Tomb Raider. Yeah, because that's here in Sam Reap. It was all filmed out at, uh, I think, Bayan Temple. So I will be doing a couple of videos. Um, that... <laughs> oh, gosh. Sleep um, exploring with short shorts. And... <laughs> no, I'm not wearing short shorts to go cave exploring. So and, uh, I'm not going to look like yeah no it was actually filmed here um pub street uh was it, uh the red piano cafe um ah, woohoo just got rid of evo i just figured out how to block people on this <laughs> Oh, yeah, so um, uh, Red Piano Cafe is where Angelina Jolie would go and eat most days. It was like her favourite cafe while she was here. Uh, so, you know, you see, like, posters of Lara Croft, you know, uh, everywhere here. So, yeah, I'll go check it out, go find out where she actually, um, they did some of the filming and go film all that. I've got heaps of ideas for filming. Um, I've just got to get out there and do it. Uh, you know, and a lot of that comes down to money as well. You know, I'm, I, I'm not rolling in funds here in Cambodia currently, so I can't do a lot of the tours or anything like that because it's just kind of an extra expense I can't afford at the moment. And yeah, yay, yeah, we you know, got rid of that troll. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I guess people who don't have uh, anything better to do on a, on a Thursday, you know. Uh, but I am going to pretty start winding this down shortly. Um, I'm a little bit dizzy still from this cold the last few days. My head's been so heavily congested. Um. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. I can do something I can do. The little tuk tuks. There are some mad tuk tuks here. Like, there's a, um, like a need for speed one. Oh, Tommy, bro. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, man. You're a fucking legend. Oh, man. <laughs> tell you well i'm gonna use that money to go do one of these stores and i'm gonna fucking shout you out when i do man thank you brother um but yeah tuk tuk there are so many yeah there's a, a need for speed one there's all these different theme ones <laughs> and there's uh there's even a, a raster man tuk tuk here you know it's all you know all the raster colors and everything i said and seriously, Siem Reap is a really cool place. Cambodia is amazing. It is really, really cool. Um, you know, and I will, I promise I will do more on the local area. Um, you know, I've got to just get a little bit more motivated and I'll you know, show you around because I would love for you all to come visit, you know, and come check out this place. Cambodia is just one of those little kind of forgotten countries everyone goes to thailand everyone goes to bali like indonesia and all that which is seriously um uh, the <laughs> the biggest problem with doing live streams here is uh the internet like data is terrible it's really bad it's actually not strong enough to be able to do a live stream walking around that's why i'm in a cafe 
just because I've got a solid Wi-Fi connection while I'm here. Um, but I could definitely go around and just, you know, film and show you a whole bunch of the different tuk-tuks. And, you know, it doesn't have to be on my regular days. I can upload it on a Monday or a Tuesday for you. There's always extra days in the week where I can do little videos if you guys want to see all that. Which I'm sure you all do. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, you know, look, I could even actually go and jump in some of these really cool tuk-tuks, you know, and just ride around and show you some cool stuff. Uh, Starlink? <laughs> Probably not. I think I've just gotten off DSL, to be fair. <laughs> Um, the, Cambodia is one of the poorest nations in Southeast Asia, uh, so their infrastructure isn't great here, uh, not compared to a lot of countries. And it's um, you know it's a shame because it is a beautiful country. Like they are really building things up, uh, you know, working on the infrastructure and updating everything, but it's still very much behind the times, man. Uh, so very limited. Um, but yeah. All right. So, um, last couple of minutes, I'm going to start winding this down because I've been on for almost about half an hour and I'm not used to talking so much. Um, anyone have any questions? Any burning questions they want to ask me? Anything about gang patches? You know, actually, what did you all think about the, the gang patch ban? Because I know, you know, a few of you have already left your comments and everything. So, um, but I, I am thinking about talking about it further uh, and really looking into those laws and how they affect people, mostly about how they affect people. Uh, maybe something I'll do after November once the, the laws actually come into effect in New Zealand. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know you and I are on the same page, babe. You know, they're just, it's ridiculous. Um, but is there anything in particular anyone wants to see? Is there anything about Sam Reap or Cambodia that they'd like to see? You know, I'm always open to suggestions, you know. I can only have so many ideas in a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I looked into those laws about them going into homes. Uh, at the moment, the laws state that if you have like three strikes, if you've been charged three times with being in public with your patch on, then they can actually go into your home and search for your patches, which is ridiculous. You know, they shouldn't be allowed to do that because it's still it's an invasion of your privacy. You know, even with cause, you know, they need a warrant at least or, you know, and your home isn't public. So, and that's what I don't understand is those laws, uh, you can't have patches in public places. So even if they get caught three times in public, then, you know, they should just jail them for that. Not go into their homes, you know, I, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Um, um, Matt, do they have much gang activity here in Cambodia? No, no, they don't. You know, um, they have uh, mafia everywhere here. Uh, you know, the, the, every community has their own mafia and they're all interconnected. It's like one big family. Um, you know, the majority of them don't do crime as such. You know, they definitely don't do petty crime. They don't do robberies. They don't steal or anything like that. Most of it's just, you know, little racketeering and bribery and things like that. But they are the go-between between the police, the government, and the people. So it's a really completely different structure here. Um, and then you get kind of, you know, you will get, they have like their own um, street gangs and stuff like that, but they are all connected to these mafia. And uh, pretty much everyone here is mafia, uh, everywhere you look. But it's, it's the same kind of concept as with gangs and all, you know, a lot of impoverished nations like New Zealand. 
The gangs are here to protect the people, you know, because the government won't. And the other voices, you know, because politicians in every country don't speak for their people. You know, they don't give a shit about their people. That's very clearly obvious. Um, oh, yeah, it's way more organized here. Um, but it's accepted. It is really accepted because they, they're the ones, so like I said, are doing things for their people. You know, the government look at them and go, well, they're actually looking after their people. So we don't have a problem with that. And it's, it's really crazy the way it works here. Um, but there's no dissent, you know. The, I mean, there's, I mean, I don't look into the politics in Cambodia at all. I you know, don't understand a lot of it. I know there's a lot of corruption here. Um, there's a lot of influence from other countries and everything like that. But it just doesn't come down to a street level. People here, literally the majority, are just trying to survive in every way they can. Um, it's a very hard country to be in. It's a very hard place to live. And that's for everyone here. You know, so, um, and I do know, I've met a couple of the, you know, the high up uh, mafia, high up gangsters, you know, since I've been here. Um, and uh, you wouldn't even know it. You wouldn't have a clue, you know, but you also have local fixes here, which are attached to the mafia. And if you need anything, if you want anything, you just go talk to the fixes. So, um, there are a few MCs here, but none of the internationals. There's uh, no 1%. MCs here. Yeah, there's a couple of local, like think, Cam Cambodia writers, and there's another one I can't remember, which is actually a few expats, but they are literally riding clubs. You know, they ride all different types of bikes. Uh, the simple fact that the large majority of the 1% MCs will require members to ride American V twin motorcycles or Harleys or Indians, people can't afford them here. You very rarely, rarely see Indians here or uh, Harleys or any big expensive bikes um, and the Cambodian government doesn't want a bar of the MCs whatsoever they actually started banning the rebels MC from here under you know because of Australian federal police now I personally know well I don't personally I know of one of the presidents of the rebels who lives here in Cambodia he was refused entry back into Cambodia at the border because he is a rebel so they just don't want any part of them whatsoever. And they also came under um, <laughs> Tuk Tuk Nike, so I'd love to see that. <laughs> um, but there was, uh, there was a pretty high profile, uh, I guess, news uh, case last year. There was four members of the Headhunters from New Zealand who were doing like a world tour and they were in Cambodia and Australian federal police, you know, notified Cambodian authorities straight away, like, oh, these guys are criminals, blah, 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 or whatsoever. Cambodian government said, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for them. We weren't going to chase them or anything. They don't really care about them. Um, and those headhunters actually went all around the world. They went to like Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Looked like they had an amazing time to look like a wicked holiday. But they're only in Cambodia for a few days and they're seeing all the sites, you know, and they're going and, um, yeah, there's places here where you can go, like, shoot, you know, World War, uh, sorry, Vietnamese war guns, you know, like M16s and M60s and rocket launchers. Uh, same as it would in Vietnam. So I think they're all out here doing that. But, um, yeah, no, there's just no, of the, none of the big international MCs here. Uh, a few of the, the big MCs from Thailand do travel to Cambodia for their runs. And I think they had a bike show here for a few years as well. And they used to come to that, you know, you get the Mongols and uh, banditos and all that coming here from Thailand. Uh, but as far as actual MCs go here in Cambodia, there are, there are none as far as I'm aware. So, and the only patches I've seen, like I said, were from Cambodia riders and half of them were riding adventure bikes. So definitely not a 1% MC. But it's, um, yeah, it's, I know there are actually a lot of expat uh, MC members living over here in Cambodia. As I said, you know, a, there were the rebels here and there are still quite a few of the rebels living here, even in Sam Reap, uh, down in Phnom Penh as well. Uh, and in Kampot, there's a lot of the guys from Australia, mostly in New Zealand. Um, Thailand's not the best place for like ex MC members or expat MC members anymore. So a lot of them do come to Cambodia, and I can see why. It's a chill place, man. Um, police don't harass you here. They don't even look twice at you, especially if you're a Westerner. Um, and as long as you keep your head down, 
I'm not going to bother you at all. Um, but yeah, I you know like if there was a bigger scene here, I probably would actually do a video about it. Um, but there's just like I said, there there ain't a lot here at all. Uh, just a lot of really old expat Australians I've noticed, and uh, a lot of French. Um, is it true? Monkeys just walking the streets with the people here. Uh, not so much in the cities, no. Uh, if you go into the temples and areas like that, yeah, there are monkeys everywhere, and um, they're not really afraid of people, but you've got to be really cautious about them. Uh, what the monkeys actually do is they'll go and steal your shit off you, like your phone or your bag or whatever, and if you leave your bag sitting anywhere, they'll go through your bag, and you have to bribe them with food to get your shit back, and they'll steal your glasses, Anything they can grab and take off you and run up a tree with, they will. And you're going to be prepared to hand over food to get it back from the little bastards, you know. In fact, when I went out to buy own temple, um, one of them made a beeline for me and he, I had a big water bottle and he was jumping up trying to grab my water bottle the whole time. He was trying to steal that, you know, but it was it weighed three times the size of him, so there's no way he was getting it. Um, it was cute, though. It made for a great video. I've got a, a little short of that one. Um, is that, uh, did a little... Oh yeah, did my <laughs> that was made for a cool video. I am going to go back out to Angkor Wat and Bayan Temple in the next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, the monkeys <laughs> doing petty crime. So I guess there you go. There's your street gangs. It's all the little macaque monkeys out of the temples. <laughs> they all gang up. Oh, I'm not going to chase a monkey up a tree. No way. The thing is, if you do chase them, they become aggressive. They're really aggressive. A lot of tourists actually get attacked here, uh, especially if you try and, you know, like, wrestle them with your bag and that. They will climb up on you and scratch your face and that. So the best thing to do with the monkeys is just keep a big distance from them. Just stay away from them um, and keep everything in your pockets, your phones, and stuff like that, and even your, your jewellery, which is actually something I wanted to talk about, I wanted to mention. Um, I don't know if anyone's noticed uh, or seen about the new uh, tourist laws coming into Indonesia that are targeting Australian and New Zealand visitors. Um, if you overstay your visa or if you get caught, you know, running a mark, if you get into trouble over there, serious penalties now like you can be in prison for up to 20 years if you overstay that's crazy so um, just a heads up to anyone going to Bali in Indonesia you know and that was the other the thing I wanted to talk about there was a guy recently who had his uh, gold necklace uh, robbed from him while he was in Bali and it's like come on don't wear that stuff around. Um, actually, maybe I should do a little, you know, a, a, a streetwise uh, travel tip video if you're coming to Southeast Asia. That be a good idea. And talk about, you know, not wearing your your expensive jewelry out so you don't attract attention and uh, keeping your stuff in your pocket so little uh, thieving monkeys can try and rip them out. Sound like a good video? Street smart travel tips. Yeah, I think that'd be a good one. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, monkeys and apes are very incredibly strong. That one that you're talking about was actually um, a, a chimpanzee. Chimpanzees are very strong and very violent. In fact, um, of all the animals that, that they have in zoos, you know, now if uh, an animal escapes, a champan uh, chimpanzees actually have a shoot to kill order. So if they escape, they're required to shoot and kill them, yeah, because of how violent and aggressive they can be. Um, whereas lions and tigers and that, they they don't have shoot orders on them. So there you go. Yeah, chimpanzees are wild, man. Um, they are actually one of the few apes that will kill, uh, kill, like attack, kill other monkeys for food. So chimpanzees will actually eat other monkeys. So none of the others do. Like even the great apes, like the silverbacks and stuff like that. They will not attack other monkeys or apes or anything like that. I mean, they're purely vegetarian. 
Uh, ooh, no, no, you can't kill the monkeys here. Um, you know, and uh, you'd have a fight on your hands if you tried. Uh, they ca they travel in massive groups. You know, there, there's entire families of them. And if one attacks you, all of them will attack you. So you'll have 30 or 40 monkeys, macaques, and the macaques are quite decent size. They get up to about that big. You know, and they have like a leader. Their leaders are usually massive alpha males. You wouldn't want one of them on you, ripping you apart, and they will rip you to pieces. So, like I said, the best thing to do is just give them a wide berth and just be wise about, you know, how you interact with them. Uh, best thing to do is don't carry food with you. Don't carry anything valuable, you know, which is a great tip when you're traveling anyway. Um, do not carry valuables with you. It's really not a wise thing to do. So, um, but now you guys have got me inspired. I am actually going to do some travel tips because there's a lot of stuff that you you encounter, especially here in Southeast Asia, that you never never really hear about. Yeah, you know, it's not your your standard travel tips. Um, you know, I've never there's so much that I've come across in my travels that you just never read about. So yeah, I'll I'll definitely do that in the next couple of weeks. And that'll be a, a good Thursday one for you. Um, but I am going to start winding this down. I'm sorry, actually, <laughs> my voice is cracking up a little bit. Um, but it's been awesome. It's been a good little chat, actually. I've really, oh, man, we've been here for about 45 minutes already. Like, this has been a cool little video so far. Um, <laughs> Real Monkey Brotherhood. Oh, yeah, they stick together, man. Oh, yeah, don't mess with the monkeys here. <laughs> Oh, hey, Quentin. Thank you for tuning in, mate. Good to see you. I've been loving your LA videos. It's just, it's taking me back. Um, oh, man, and you look like you had such an amazing time with your family. It's wicked videos. I love them. I love them. I can't wait to see the rest of them. Seriously. You got me so excited to see all your, your travel videos now. Uh, all right. So that's it for me. Um, I will be seeing you on Sunday for another video. Like I said, this week's going to be uh, about the reasons around why people join gangs. So that should be quite an interesting one. And oh, I'm glad you're enjoying them too, man. Thank you for tuning in. Seriously, thank you to everyone who tunes in. Like, it blows me away. When I first started this channel a couple of years ago, you know. I never expected it would get to where it is now. And it's all because of you guys. Like, seriously, I'm getting all emotional. Um, I love this whole community and I love t being able to talk to you guys in this way and just sharing. And uh, it's been absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible, man. <laughs> I always take a sleazy, brother. You look after yourself, Tommy. All right. You too, Quentin. All right, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm melting, and I just, I'm going to get back home. So, hey, thank you all so much. Thanks for tuning in, and sorry about the whole vertical horizontal thing initially. I'm glad we got it all sorted. But uh, take care, everyone. Love and light to you all, and blessings. Peace out and all that good stuff. All right? Later, y'all.